Have you ever wondered what it's like to live with an electric car in Australia? Well, I've been living with this one, the new Kia Niro, for three months to find out. I've used it as my mobile office, I've driven it long distances, and once I even used it to charge another electric car. So stay with us for this video as I run you through the highlights. Now the Nero we've tested for this review is the top spec GT Line EV, which costs a smidge over $70,000. And that's a lot of money considering you can get the very popular base Tesla Model 3 or Polestar 2 for significantly less cash. There is some stuff that this Kia gets that its major rivals don't. So let's take a closer look. The cabin is where the Kia Nero is at its best. It really feels big and open in here for someone my height at six foot tall. But my girlfriend, she likes driving it too because the dash is really low and she feels like she can see the road as well. So that's really neat. The cabin feels really futuristic too, thanks to these big screens with fast software and this wheel, which comes out of the larger Kia EV6 too. The one issue I ran into in here is that the Apple CarPlay connection isn't super reliable. I found with that USB cable, I don't know What's going on or whether it's specific to this car or not it's just something i ran into there's also this really neat panel here full of shortcut buttons now in my three months with this car i've had plenty of friends and family right in the back here with me and not one person has complained about the amount of room back there there's quite a lot of it there's a nice flat floor which makes it feel more open and not one person who is wider or taller than me has complained about the height or width of that cabin back there it's also got some really neat features like a full-size power outlet down there which lets you charge your laptop so i've been able to work while i'm charging the car up or i'm on the go as you can see, the boot is big, but not enormous, as cabin space has clearly been prioritized in this design, but it does still fit our full Cars Guide luggage set. The Nero can travel 460 kilometers between charges, and that's pretty good and quite achievable, especially when you drive it around town. Now, I can't charge this car up at home, so where do I charge it? Well, that's where the charging speed comes in. So, Charging up on a common 50 kilowatt DC charger means the Nero will charge from 10 to 80% in just an hour. And on AC, it's got a medium charging speed of 11 kilowatts, which I found is pretty good and can charge this car in four to six hours, depending on what level of charge you've left at. Then it's got this thing, which is really cool and not many EVs have this yet. It's called a V2L adapter and it's got a charging socket in there, which means I can plug it into my car here and power external devices with it. And I actually use this to save a stranded electric car once. Now, one thing that the Kia Nero has that you wish every EV had is a frunk. Now it's not huge, but it is big enough to hold all of your charging paraphernalia. The Kia Niro is really agreeable to drive. It's comfortable immediately and has really good visibility out of the cabin as well. I find it's nice and light when it comes to the steering, although it does have a slightly weird artificial quality to it that the previous car didn't have, but it's still nice and easy to use around town. The ride is really comfortable as well. It's certainly not as firm as something like the Tesla Model 3, and it, it's almost hatch-like, not really SUV-like, which is a little bit odd considering this car shape. It deals with small bumps really quite well, but larger bumps you do still feel the weight of those big batteries with big bumps transferred into the cabin. Now performance wise, this car isn't as aggressive as something like a Tesla Model 3. It doesn't have that really violent accelerator quality and that pure performance that some EVs have. Although it's not as tame as the Nissan Leaf and it falls kind of in a comfortable middle ground between the two. It also has some bespoke EV features too, particularly the regenerative braking. In this car you have four levels, and the best one, and the one I've spent the most time in, is the single pedal driving mode. And that's because it's so efficient. In fact, in this car it's particularly efficient. It will really squeeze every last moment out of your deceleration to put energy back into the battery. And as a result, over nearly 3,000 kilometers, this car has consumed 15 kilowatt hours to 100 kilometers. And that's really quite good. I've really enjoyed my time with the fully electric Kia Niro GT line, and I will miss it, but would I own one myself? Well, that's the big question, and at more than $70,000, I do think it's a little hard to justify compared to its key rivals. But it does have some features that I think all EVs should have. Things like that V2L, its massive cabin, even things like the frunk are really convenient, and I've never once experienced range anxiety in my time with it. I hope its competitors are taking note.